Hi everyone, this is Neil Writer here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a very interesting case of a patient who attended with bilateral occluding earwax, but also underlying exostosis, which is more commonly known as surface ear. And I'll explain that in more detail in a moment. Um, just commencing with this day of right ear first, and I'm using a caudal hook. So just trying to leverage this wax. It's quite dry, it was matted. So there's quite a few hairs there. So what's exostosis or surface ear? Um, I was, uh, the patient themselves were not aware that they had this condition and neither was I until I removed the wax. And exostosis or surface ear is an abnormal um, uh, narrowing of the ear canal due to additional bony growth of the bony part of the ear canal due to uh, prolonged um, and um, long-standing exposure to most typically cold water because it also can happen with cold air. And this patient advised that uh, whilst they were growing up, um, they used to swim in the, the ocean, which wasn't too far from them uh, on a regular basis. They spent years in cold uh, oceanic water. And what happens when you're exposed to cold water like this patient over a long period of time, the bony part of the ear canal, it's only got a very thin layer of skin lining it. Um, and that's the epidermis layer of skin. That's the outermost layer. It doesn't have the dermis, which is the, uh, the middle layer of skin, or uh, indeed the subcutaneous layer, which is made up of insulating fat. So the inner two thirds of the ear canal, it's got a very, very thin, delicate lining of skin. The epidermis is less than 0.1 millimeters in thickness. And sitting on the bone, we have a structure called periosteum. And periosteum um, is a sheath that lines the bone and it supplies the bone with all the blood, uh, nutrients uh, it requires uh, to exist. Um, and in response to uh, cold water or indeed cold air, the blood capillaries and blood vessels um, within the periosteum, they dilate. And when they dilate, you obviously get increased blood flow. And that initiates the activity of osteoblast cells. Now, osteoblast cells, um, they reside on the surface of the bone. And these specialised um, cells uh, promote the growth of, uh, growth of new bone. The opposite to osteoblast cells are osteoclast cells. Um, and that's when you get a uh, uh, the necrosis of bone and the decaying of bone and the breaking down of bone. And you can see here, um, I'll just pause that for you. So just in the distance in the middle, you can see the back part of the eardrum and you've got these large bony protrusions. And with exostosis or surface ear, you generally get three. You get one on the front part of the ear canal, one at the back and one on the roof. Now, believe it or not, the patient can hear perfectly in that ear. There's just enough of an opening for sound to enter that ear and vibrate uh, against the eardrum. It's probably one of the most extreme cases of exostosis I've seen. You know, I've got plenty of patients who do have that condition, but you can more or less see the majority of the eardrum. And this is their left ear. Um, once I remove the wax, you'll see this patient's also got exostosis in this ear, uh, but it's not as aggressive. It's not as, um, it's not as developed. Uh, in comparison to the right ear and what I see in this patient's left ear is what I normally see in most patients with this condition so that right side if it the patient's not exposed to any cold air or cold water as they previously were but if that was to worsen um, the patient may need surgery they may need a, a canaloplasty where an ENT surgeon basically chisels away all that excessive bone to expose the eardrum again but uh, for now, that, that, that is fine. Other reasons why an ENT surgeon may perform surgery in the case of exostosis or surface ear is if they're developing chronic um, ear infections or uh, chronic buildup of wax. Now, this patient does suffer from wax, they, they advise, but it's probably once um, a year or every two years that they need it uh, removed. So it's not, it's not excessive. And uh, you can see here, so this... The bone, particularly on the front part of the ear canal, is quite enlarged. Uh, but you can see much more of this, this eardrum. Just remove some dead skin off the base of the ear canal. And you can see those blood capillaries and blood vessels that I was referring to. So um, you can see it on the bony part of the ear canal because the epidermis layer is so th 
that's thin, you can see it almost through it, it's, it's almost transparent. Whereas the outer third of the ear canal has got a thicker layer of skin, which is one millimetre in thickness, and it's very rare that you can see the individual blood capillaries or vessels on the, the cartilaginous portion. Um, and sometimes with this condition, it, again, I've just frozen that for you, you can see much more of the eardrum there, I can see about four fifths. Um, sometimes with this condition, you can get an abnormal migration of skin off the eardrum as well, you can collect behind. Uh, the bone but in this case the skin's migrating fine but i hope you enjoyed that video guys take care keep well speak soon